Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Farah and the FA families that are attending, we are very excited that you are here, and thank you for supporting Farah. It's a great honor of mine to introduce the next speaker. I've gotten to know pretty well over the last several years. I believe many of you have heard this quote in the past, life is 10 life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. And I saw this come to life in an amazing way a few years ago while I was at the gym working out and in walks Michael and uh, He's moving about the equipment, and I'm on the treadmill finishing up my run. But I was sitting there watching him, and I couldn't help but thinking in that morning all the excuses I had in my own mind why I didn't want to be there. It's too early, it's too cold, and, and, and so on. But seeing Michael inspired me uh, because he had bigger challenges to face that morning, and yet he was there. When I finished, I went over there to visit with him. He, did, he didn't know I was watching him. But during the conversation that I had with him, he said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, I don't have a choice when it comes to Friedrich's ataxia, but I do have a choice how I react to it. And I'm going to do everything I can physically and mentally to fight this disease and keep moving forward. And since that time, I've seen him do a lot of things that shows that he is moving forward. Michael was diagnosed at, uh, just before his 16th birthday in 2016. So how did he react to this devastating news? Well, for starters, in 2017, he set up a screening of the movie The Ataxian, which chronicles a group of other young men and women with F.A., uh, and there's a biked across America to raise awareness and raise funds. Shortly after that, Michael, with the support of his amazing family, decided to do more, and that's where the Cure FA soiree came from. So Michael reacted the only way he knows how, and that's with music, which so far the soiree has raised over a million dollars in the last four years. So Still moving forward, Michael attended St. Louis, went to St. Louis to attend Washington University, and just graduated last month with his bachelor's in math and economics. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming one of the most inspiring and courageous person I've ever met, Michael Gay. Okay, okay, calm down. Okay, calm down everybody. You didn't even know if it's gonna be any good yet, so simmer down. Uh, if my voice sounds like I have been talking nonstop for the past two days, that is because I have been talking nonstop for the past two days. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> but, hello, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Um, it's great to be with you tonight. I love Farah. I love the FA community. Obviously, I hate FA. I love the Cure FA Soiree, and most of all, it's a pleasure to have raised 300, almost $390,000 tonight. So. One of the other things I love to do is to eat. Since we went virtual in 2020, Outback Steakhouse has provided delicious food and wonderful service at the Cure FA Soiree. The Oklahoma FA community is lucky to have the incredible support of the man who introduced me, David Burns of Outback. My family has greatly enjoyed getting to know David, his wife Lana, and most importantly, their dog, Ollie. <laughs> Outback donations over the years. <laughs> Thanks, Lana. 
App explanations over the years have helped to us to send every dollar we raise times two to Ferret every year. It'll be said again tonight, but thanks once more to Outback and shout out to their incredible servers who are so, they're so nice, they're so great. I grew up playing sports like a normal kid. I was never super great at them, but honestly that didn't really bother me because I didn't really enjoy playing playing them that much. So uh, being bad at them wasn't, wasn't a big deal in my mind. The last sport I ever played was baseball. I stumbled out to second base as a seventh grader that was nervous to be doing fielding drills with the eighth graders. The eighth grader on first threw a ball faster than I had ever had a ball thrown at me. And of course, I didn't catch it. Luckily, I was in the ensemble of an upcoming musical at school, so the black eye that came with it was really just method acting. <laughs> Over the years since my FA diagnosis, I've begun to follow sports more and more. I mostly like Major League Baseball, as it's fun to watch people do amazing things, and there are lots of numbers, statistics, and averages for me to look at, and, keep tabs on. I was talking recently to some guys with FA who also like sports. One of them asked if we could, what position would we play and what sport would we play and why? Everyone else gave great answers with a heartfelt and understandable reasoning. I said baseball but struggled to name a position, or give anything that resembled a good why, other than because that's a sport I like to watch. The other guys miss playing sports. They yearn to do that again. I don't. I miss singing. I miss sounding good. I miss harmonizing. I miss being able to contribute to family sing-alongs. I miss being able to carry a tune other than in my head. I miss not hating the sound of my voice. Many FAers work out and play adaptive sports. How can I adapt to losing this ability that I loved? I, I don't know. I don't really have a cut and dry answer for you. I thought about the process of trying to give an answer here, and uh, I'll give some of what I might call an answer, <laughs> but I'd like to know that I don't really think it's complete. I don't really ever think I'll fully be able to adapt to what I've lost. With that said, here's my somewhat proposed solution. This, let's get together. Let's put on and listen to amazing performances and music, and let's raise as much money as we can for an organization fighting to gain back what's been lost at the hands of Friedrich Sachsia. Let's make a world where nobody has to lose what I've, what we've lost. Thank you, and good night.